Hello, everyone. My name is Andy Hopper, and I'm a solutions architect with Amazon Web Services. In this video, I'll be showing you how you can use the AWS SDK for .NET in your Xamarin projects to create mobile applications that use AWS services. I'll be using Visual Studio on a Windows machine, but if you're developing on a Mac, I've recorded another video that demonstrates the developer experience using Visual Studio for Mac OS. So let's get started. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new project. And since I want a cross-platform user interface, I'm gonna go ahead and use Xamarin Forms. Next, I'll give it a name for my application. I'll call it Demo App. And then you'll be presented with a choice for what kind of template you wanna use. In my case, I'm gonna start from scratch. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a blank application template. And I'm only gonna to deploy to Android and to iOS. Once we have our solution created, it's time to add support for the AWS SDK. To do this, we use the standard NuGet approach. So we'll right-click on the project, we'll do Manage NuGet Packages, and then we'll browse for uh, online packages. And in the search bar, we'll enter AWS SDK. Now, the first thing you might notice is that there are gonna be a lot of search results that come up with that search phrase. That's because the .NET SDK team did a very good job separating each service out into its own NuGet package. This means that the services are able to run at their own rate as they add features. And it also means that for you as an application developer, you'll need to, need to take reference to the libraries you actually need for your application. So that's a good thing. Now, in my case, I'm gonna wanna add support for DynamoDB because I'm gonna read from a DynamoDB table. And so I'll choose the AWS SDK DynamoDB. I'll go ahead and install that one. And yes, choose which projects I'm going to install this into. Now, in order to use DynamoDB, I'm also going to need some credentials. So in my case, I'm going to use the Cognito Identity uh, Package. And what this will allow me to do is to leverage Cognito to get a, an access key and a secret for my application. So I'll go ahead and install that. Go ahead and choose it into these two. And then finally, because I'm using a Xamarin Forms app, I want to use an MVVM Lite library just to help me with my data binding. So I'll use MVVM Lite libs. And I'll go ahead and install that. All right, now that we have all of our packages installed, we can get to actually writing some code. So. I'd like to go ahead and fetch my data from DynamoDB. And to do that, I'm going to create what's called a view model because I'm using the MVVM approach. So I'll add a new class. And I'll name it main page view model. Once I have my view model, I'm going to go ahead and derive it from that library I pulled down. And I'll use their view model base class. This is just a helper class that has some plumbing that makes data binding much easier. I'll go ahead and define a public constructor on this. It won't take any parameters. And next, I want to be able to give my view access to the data that I'm going to be downloading. So I'm going to go ahead and define a data property on this class. I'll make it a public I enumerable of objects. Now, in practice, you would want to use a strongly typed class to store your application data, but this is a demo app, so I'm taking a few architectural shortcuts. So I'll call my project data, or my property data, and I'll put a getter and a private setter on it. Great. Now let's add the code to actually fetch the data. So I'll make it private async task, and I'll call it fetch data. And what this method is going to do is actually pull data from DynamoDB and then package it into that data property I just created. Now, I mentioned earlier that I won't be able to call DynamoDB without credentials. So let's go ahead and get some. Credentials. And to do this, I'm going to use the Cognito Identity uh, Library in order to pull some out of Cognito. Now, what I've done is, before I wrote this app, 
I created a new Cognito identity pool, and in that identity pool, I've got two roles, an unauthenticated role for anonymous users and an authenticated role for users that have been able to successfully authenticate. In my case, I've gone ahead and given the uh, unauthenticated role for anonymous users the ability to access this DynamoDB table. So I'm going to go ahead and get Cognito AWS credentials, and you'll notice that this needs two things. It wants an identity pool ID, and then it asks for a region. Uh, in my case, I've I've got a file that actually includes my identity pool ID. I just didn't want to type it into this video. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and pull it into my project. I'll add an existing item and I'll look and see demo and I'll add AWS environment. Great. So inside my AWS environment class, it's got a string property for identity pool ID. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and define that I'm using the region endpoint of US East one, because that's where I define my Cognito identity pool. Great, now that we have credentials, it's time for us to actually call into DynamoDB. So to do that, uh, I'm gonna actually use a pattern that you'll see used throughout the .NET SDK for AWS. Uh, you'll create client classes, and then those clients have API calls that take a, a request object, and then they return a response object. And in addition to that, you'll notice that all the API calls are asynchronous. Now, this is great news because we actually have uh, first party support for C Sharp's idiomatic async a wait. Uh, so this makes writing your code, uh, asynchronous code, much, much easier. So let's go ahead and define a DynamoDB client. And it'll be a new amazon.dynamodbv2 DynamoDB client. Oops. No. DB client, there we go. And so what this wants is a set of credentials and a region. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it the credentials we just created. And I'm gonna define Amazon region endpoint US East one again. And now we have our client. So let's go ahead and fetch some data. I'll go ahead and define a, a local variable called results. And this will be the result of an await on the DynamoDB client calling a scan async method. Now the scan async actually wants a scan request. So let's go ahead and add a new scan request object. And what this will want, let's go ahead and fix our references while we're here. So what this wants is a table name. And in my case, it's gonna be demo app data. And then what it's gonna want is a list of attributes to get. Now, let's take a look at our DynamoDB table. You'll see I've got three attributes on here. I've got an ID, that's the primary uh, or the partition key for my uh, DynamoDB table, but I also have a description and a name attribute on them. And you'll notice that they're both strings. That'll be important in just a moment. So let's go ahead and do a new list of string and it will take ID and we'll ask for name and we'll ask for description. Great. Next, now that we have a results object, you're gonna see if we have a successful request to our DynamoDB table, it'll be contained inside an items property on that results object. What I'd like to do is take the content of that, which is gonna be in a DynamoDB specific format, and I'd like to go ahead and use link to project that into a format that my application can actually consume. So let's go ahead and say data is gonna be equal to results.items, and I'm gonna do a select, and let's fix our references there. I'm gonna use link. And what that's gonna do is take an item for each row that we get returned back from DynamoDB, and I'm gonna return a new uh, object, and that object is gonna have an ID property, which is gonna be the ID attribute, and I want the string value of that, so I'll use the .s property on it. Next, I'll ask for the name, which will come from the I of name, and I'll ask for the string value of that. And then finally, I'll ask for the description which will come from the I, I, I object, and I'll ask for the description property, if I could spell, dot string value of that. And then finally, I'd like to go ahead and order this by the name property. Great. 
Great, so let's go ahead and let our view know that there's now data available to be rendered. And to do that, we'll actually use a property on that view model base class I derived from called raise property changed. And what this does is take the name of the property that is changed and I'll do name of and I'll pass it data. And we're almost done with our view model. The last little thing I need to remember to do is to actually call the fetch data uh, just to make sure we actually retrieve our data from DynamoDB. Awesome. So now it's time for us to go and tweak our view so it can actually render the data we pulled from DynamoDB. All right, so let's go ahead and modify our view so we can render our data. Now, the project template actually puts some boilerplate Hello World, Hello World style code inside here. So let's go ahead and take this out and we're gonna add a list view that will display our data. And what I'll do is I'll tell the list view that its item source is gonna come from a binding against the data property. And I'd like to format what the contents in this list view look like. So I'm gonna add an item template to it. So I'll define a list view item template. Now that includes a data template, which in turn contains a view cell. And what I'd like to do is just stack the name and description uh, properties on top of one another. And so I'll do that using a pair of labels that are contained inside a stack layout. I'll add a label. I'll say that his text is gonna come as a binding against the name property. And just to kind of highlight it, I'll set the, uh, the font attributes to bold, just to uh, make the name property a bit stand out a bit. Next is I'll go ahead and add a label that will contain the description. Whoop, hang on a second. Text is gonna be equal to a binding against description. Great. And I won't do any text decoration on that one. Okay, so now we've got our view and it should display our data. The last little thing to do is to make our view aware of our view model. To do that, I'll go into our app startups code. And if you look in here, you'll see out of the box, it just spins up a new main page and hands it off. Let's go ahead and set up that data binding context. And that'll be a new main page view model. All right, at this point, it's time for us to view the fruits of our labor. So I'm gonna go ahead and debug my application and get it deployed to the Android emulator. So it compiles, it's gonna launch our activity. And after a couple of seconds, it's gonna fetch our data from DynamoDB and voila. All right, so just to recap, AWS has great support for .NET, .NET Core, and Xamarin developers. We've published our SDK using the very popular NuGet package management system, and as you just saw, we've made it easy to access the data in your environment in just a few lines of code. I hope this video was useful to you, and I can't wait to see what you build on AWS. Happy coding! Thank <music> you.